Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. Uh, a while back, we put some uh, sun power solar panels on the house. Uh, I did some blog posts around that on the site, like how we chose the panel and all that other stuff. So go check that out if you weren't already aware of it. One of the goals around that that I just never got around to do anything about it until now was figuring out a way to take that data that the panels generate, uh, which includes the household consumption and the uh, net metering numbers and do something a little bit more interesting and more useful with it. SunPower does provide an app and a website that kind of show that stuff, but it's all very much siloed inside of their very limited ecosystem. You can't really look at it in, in, a, in a more manageable or useful way. Fortunately, I didn't end up having to do any software development, coding or whatever myself. As it turns out, there is a uh, integration that exists for Home Assistant, which is a home automation platform that I have been using a lot more lately. Uh, you install this Hass SunPower integration using the um, Hacks or H-A-C-S, which is like a third-party app store kind of thing for Home Assistant. I'm not going to walk through how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. If that is something that somebody has questions around, um, just you know, shoot that in the comment below and I can kind of show how to install applications through Hacks. Besides getting the, the raw data into a consumable format, I also wanted to see the panel level data, which is something I couldn't see using the SunPower application even, although that is supposed to be coming at some point in the near future. So th the point of this is more theoretical. One, to say, hey, this thing exists. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you have SunPower panels and you're using Home Assistant, uh, you should go do something like this because it's really neat that you can pull this data into Home Assistant and, and look at it. The way that I do this is quite different from the way that um, I think most folks probably will be doing it. So this is also less of a, this is how you would do it, but more of a, there are lots of ways that you can do this. This is just one way to get it done. At a high level, I used a Unify Managed Switch. I created a separate subnet. I used a Linux system to reverse proxy the requests from Home Assistant into the SunPower console because of that's just kind of how you have to do it. So let's just kind of walk through how I did that. The person who did this, they suggest using a Raspberry Pi, which I'm sure totally works. You stick it in there like this. You would basically are using the Raspberry Pi's built-in Wi-Fi and a, an Ethernet adapter or a USB Ethernet adapter with the Raspberry Pi functioning as the reverse proxy. I didn't want to approach it that way because I had already pulled Cat5 into the box to connect up to the yellow port here, which is the WAN port. So I took a Unify Flex Mini, which is a PoE, a small PoE managed switch, and basically configured one port to act as the WAN port and one port to connect to the LAN console port. The WAN port uses standard DHCP as the one that you're intended to use as a consumer. This LAN port, the black one, is uh, a special port. It's really only intended to be used by the installer, but it does provide the data that you need. It's just kind of complicated to get to it. The thing that makes it complicated is that this port wants to be the gateway for the network. So what I ended up doing was creating a separate subnet on the in the IP space that the LAN console uses is 172.27.153.x. The SunPower console wants to be .1. Obviously, you can't have both things be .1, and you can't have both things be the gateway. So I configured the UDM Pro to be to start the subnet at .2. I was hoping that what I would be able to do was have the UDM Pro route traffic from all the other subnets that I would potentially want to talk to the subnet from, but that didn't work out. And I suspect it's because they just can't work that way because of the, the gateway. I, I might have been able to do a static route or something, but uh, I didn't end up doing that. So that I went the reverse proxy route. As I mentioned, I used the uh, Unify Flex Mini, which is this PoE, simply PoE managed switch. One of the ports is the WAN port and one of the ports is this LAN console port. 
because of this networking weirdness, I did end up needing to use a reverse proxy, which the Raspberry Pi function in this other person's uh, configuration. I have a VM, a Mutu VM that I use for the network services kind of stuff for my IoT network, which is where the Home Assistant uh, VM sits in the in its IP space and where the SunPower system sits in its IP space. So it was a natural fit. Um, one of the things that made this a little bit more complicated was that I run PyHole on this box, and PyHole takes port 80. The LAN console wants to be on port 80, or responds to port 80 with the its REST service. The way that I sorted that out was to assign a second IP address in my IoT space to this server as well as a separate network adapter in the 172.27.153.x space that the UDM Pro would assign via DHCP an IP address. This can be DHCP because it's just reverse proxying through this box. It doesn't, what whatever this IP is, is it doesn't matter. This does need to be a static IP. So what I, I ended up just modifying the um, network interfaces to add a separate static IP in this subnet. Obviously, after you do this, you won't want to restart the um, networking configuration. Once you have that IP assigned, and you can verify that it, you know that it's been bound properly. If you're using Pi Pihole, it uses, however you say that, Light TTP, Light HTTP, I don't know, as its web server. It can also act as a reverse proxy. So it, it was very simple to just kind of set up this uh, external conf, which is how you need to do it. Otherwise, it'll get overwritten every time you update PyHole. First, you just need to bind it to the base. The default configuration, bind it to the, the base IP so that PyHole will keep working. Then modify the server module so that it includes the proxy. There might be a m slicker way to do that, instead of like to just add the proxy instead of overriding all of the modules but i couldn't figure out how to make that work and i got bored trying to f mess around with it so i just copied them all over and then added the proxy then adding the uh, configuration to listen on port 80 on this new ip address which then reverse proxies it back to the lan console port on the SunPower monitoring device once you've done that, obviously save that. You want to check that your configuration works or that your, um, yeah, you want to check that your configuration works. And then you want to restart light HTTP. And then it should come up. You can confirm that by going to the new IP address that you stood up to act as the, for the reverse proxy with the, the CGI bin command that I pulled from here. When that's all done and everything's working, that's when you go to Home Assistant, you would install the integration in Hacks and then configure it to pull in, using the IP address of the reverse proxy to pull in all of your panels and the consumption, the supervisor, the consumption and the production devices. I changed the names of these just to make them a little bit more user-friendly and consumable. There's a little bit of a trick to setting up the energy uh, dashboard in Home Assistant. And this is something that I, it took me a little while to figure out how to, how to do this. So I'm going to quickly walk through how to set this part up to make sure to make it work right. Once you have all of the panels and consumption production devices set up inside of Home Assistant, you got to open one of those up. And you, you're going to use this lifetime power value. And if you click on it, you're going to want to note this part, the sensor dot lifetime underscore power underscore two. This is your consumption. And it maps to this, the grid consumption. You have lifetime power, uh, lifetime underscore power underscore two. And you're going to want to do the same for the production value to look at that. Because this is how you're going to know. So this is lifetime underscore power. 
you're going to fill that in in two places, both here in the return to grid, assuming that you do net metering. You confirm lifetime power and in your solar panel production value is lifetime power. Once those are set up, after a little while, you should start getting data in here. The data for the first few days will be kind of rubbish because it just kind of sucks everything up because it's a cumulative. I don't know why it does it this way, but Home Assistant uses these big numbers and then starts breaking them down by time buckets. So it kind of is what it is. So the first day that I had in here is rubbish. After a day or two, the, day, the data cleaned up and the numbers that I saw over here match the numbers that I would see in the SunPower app. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or need me to dig into something a little bit in a little more detail, let me know. Cheers.